Lone Mountain Turquoise really needs no introduction to turquoise lovers. In this ongoing series on famous turquoise mines, we're going to talk about Lone Mountain. Lone Mountain is situated outside of Tonopah, Nevada. It was first located in 1923 by Lee Hand. And you can read about the history of the Lone Mountain Turquoise Mine in Turquoise in America Part 2, 1910 to 1990, which can be purchased on our website, turquoiseinamerica.com. And what I would like to talk a little bit about Lone Mountain is the fact that because Doc Wilson was who took over the mine in 1929 was really responsible for taking lots of very high grade Lone Mountain turquoise and bringing it to market. He was located in Los Angeles and there was a jeweler there, Fred Peschlakai, who became one of the most important jewelers in the history of Native American jewelry. And he became known for using high grade Lone Mountain turquoise. Throughout the period, we're going to see other famous jewelers using Lone Mountain turquoise in their jewelry, including this piece that was made by Preston Menangi and then later reworked by his son, Jesse. In this, we see a type of Lone Mountain turquoise. It's a bit different from what is traditionally known as the high grade, which was more of a dark web. This we see is a lighter blue, very beautiful turquoise but some don't realize it, that Lone Mountain has quite a bit of this look as well. Julian Lovato was another very famous Indian jeweler who was well known for using Lone Mountain turquoise. So let's take a look at some Lone Mountain. Looking at these two trays of Lone Mountain turquoise, one might think we were looking at uh, two different mines. Certainly the one on the right here, I think there's a lot of people who would say, well, my goodness, that's number eight turquoise, but it's not, it's Lone Mountain. It has that same lighter blue on the lighter brownish red matrix like we saw with the Preston Monongi, Jesse Monongi Bolo. And even then, that look here, as we see here with this lighter blue, it changes as we get down in here a little bit different color of blue, but similar background of the matrix. Then in this tray, starting here at the top, we're really seeing what really is considered more of a high-grade Lone Mountain look. Uh, with that distinctive blue and, and what is almost what would be considered maybe a dendrite formation in the turquoise. And we, we know that um, there was a lot of fossil turquoise, which simply means the turquoise formed within the structure of an old fossil. And uh, more of a traditional look, but going down into a kind of a range of, of different looks as we get into these smaller cabs. So we see there is a range of different looks of turquoise coming from Lone Mountain. <laughs> 